After having to sell my DF64 when I left Japan, I felt a flat burr shaped hole in my espresso setup. Does the DF83 make things right, or are the larger burrs just not worth the asking price? First of all, a big thank you to Joe at Espresso Outlet for sending me this for review. No money has changed hands and this isn't a sponsored video, but if you like my channel and you want to support me going forward and you want to pick up a DF83 for yourself, please use my affiliate link in the description as that gives me a little bit of extra money to spend on more gear for review. So let's start with how this grinder feels to use in my daily workflow. Right off the bat, I love how crazy fast this grinder is. Compared to other grinders I've used with smaller burr sets, this one grinds out 18 grams for espresso in under 5 seconds, which is just awesome. Build quality is excellent on the main body, and it's a reassuringly heavy grinder that feels like it's going to last forever. In the box there are a bunch of accessories that come with it, including a see-through dosing cup, a dosing funnel, a brush, an RDT spray, and a hopper if you wanted to do more beans than just single dosing. It is still pretty loud and in my testing it came out at around 80 decibels so it's still going to jolt you awake before you've had time for your morning coffee. The grinder is angled forward to assist with the grinds coming out and this is really a single dose grinder at heart. So even though there is a hopper included I haven't really felt much need to use this and it is a little bit difficult to grind to a specific weight. If you want something like that I'd recommend something like the D64E which has a grind timer. So after weighing out your dose, you switch it on with a button at the side, which I think is a much better placement than on the DF64. I usually weigh out my beans using the dosing cup and then grind directly into the portafilter with the dosing funnel on top. And there's no need to worry about your portafilter falling out as there are rubber feet on all four of the prongs to make sure that it doesn't fall out with the vibration of the grinder. Moving the grind size is very easy with the dial and even making small adjustments feels clean because you don't need to push hard or over adjust for a tight dial. I've mainly been on a grind setting of between 25 and 12 and that's nowhere near where the burrs touch at around 3, which reassures me that the grinder is capable of doing a lot finer if I need it to. Now there's a ring dial that points to exactly where you're grinding and you can move this so that it points to the zero when you get to the burr's touching point, which is very useful to know the true range of your grinder. The only frustrating thing is a slight misalignment of a few of the numbers on the dial. So when I'm pointing at 20, it's slightly off. So I'm not quite sure if I'm dialing at 20 or 21 and I usually just count down from the 30 point to see where I'm actually grinding at. I would have liked it if every five points had a slightly longer line so it's easier to tell where I'm grinding at one simple glance. I tested grind retention as well and with the bellows it's basically zero. Without using the bellows that's another story and in my testing I found that between 0.5 and 1.5 grams of coffee remained in the chamber which is just another reason why I probably won't be using the hopper. If you look inside, you'll see the stock burrs are stainless steel and they're very easily aligned with mechanism. I've pulled this machine apart a few times to look inside and I haven't had any problems with realigning them when I put it back together. You can switch out the stock burrs for SSP burrs when you go through the checkout on Espresso Outlet, but as of now, I don't think there's been very much testing on other 83mm SSP burrs like, for example, the Mazda ones. I'll look into getting some SSP burrs for a video on this in the future. Now, I did try removing one and both of the declumpers as suggested by some modders and I found this to be a terrible idea. Funnily enough, the parts of the machine actually do have a function, and without them, coffee grinds just spray everywhere. And honestly, I didn't notice much of an issue with the declumpers anyway. When I opened it up, there was about a gram of coffee stuck in the chute, which just gives me more reason to use the included RDT to prevent static and build up inside. Now that I've closed that up, let me talk about the look of the grinder, which I think is pretty clean and chic with most home espresso setups. I love the addition of a wood blower cover, which is lighter than the one on the DF64 and looks and feels great. I got the version in black, which goes really nicely with my current setup, which unfortunately is only temporary. But if you want to get a white one that goes better with your espresso setup, there's a black and a white one available. And the color on this one is anodized paint, which looks great and I haven't noticed any indication that attracts scratches or fingerprints after over a month of daily use. But I would love to hear what you think about the look of the DF83 as well, so tell me in the comments and if there are other grinders out there that you think look much nicer. tested with a lot of different coffees over the last few weeks and the taste that I'm getting out of the stock stainless steel burrs 
is fantastic. I'll do a whole other video about flat burrs versus conical burrs for espresso soon, but in short, flat burrs give a sharpness and clarity to espressos that I really like. I generally prefer lighter roasts anyway, and with stepless adjustment on this grinder, I can get really close to get the exact flavors I want from different roasts and beans. You get a nice even particle size and those fluffy grinds that everyone's always talking about going straight into your porta filter, and I haven't really had any issues with clumping either. At this stage and price range, you're really approaching the best of what you can expect to get out of a home coffee grinder. And spending more money is probably going to have big diminishing returns quickly because most of what you're paying for is better workflow or increased longevity for pulling hundreds of shots a day like you would in a cafe. Speaking of price, the DF83 is on Espresso Outlet right now for around $700. I'm sure there are better grinders out there that cost two or three times as much that I haven't tried out, but at this point, it's really only the most developed palettes that can even taste the difference. I'm hoping to get more grinders in in the near future for testing and comparisons, but for now I'm happy with the DF83 as my daily driver. Although... loving using this grinder, there are a few things that I would want improved just from my perspective of an average workflow pulling two to five shots every day. Aside from the previously mentioned alignment of the burrs being slightly off, these rubber feet on the prongs bothered me a little bit. They are a bit flimsy and they kind of shimmy out little by little and I am a bit worried about them getting damaged over time. I'd prefer something a little bit more like the hook on the Mythos 1, which holds the porta filter in place and basically assuages all worries that it will fall out with coffee grinds in it. Next, I think the dosing cup is great, I like that it's see-through and it doesn't get as much static in it as some of the metal ones that I've used, but the dosing funnel could use a little bit better precision machining. It doesn't always connect so nicely with the cup, and if you use it with a portafilter to do a quick WDT, you might find that it leaves a little ring around the outside that I'm worried might promote a little bit more channeling. Also, the addition of a hopper to me just feels a bit pointless. With a large amount of grime retention when not using the bellows, this basically just makes me think I don't want to use the hopper at all. This is clearly a single dose grinder. It's made for it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But honestly, those are my only complaints, and that feels pretty minor, all things considered. For the money, I think it'd be hard to find any coffee grinders out there that do what this one can do, although I'm open to being wrong about that. But another exciting news, I'm opening a cafe in England. I've teamed up with my sister who opened a cafe a couple years ago to make a new speciality cafe in the small village of Hilton in Cambridgeshire. I've been doing this home espresso thing on YouTube for a while now and I love making coffee so much that I think it's about time I started taking coffee more seriously as a career. Obviously this place isn't done yet, there's a whole bunch more to do, but I will be roasting the coffee and I'll be here every day making the espresso and finding out how much harder it is to run a coffee shop than it is just to make espressos for yourself at home. I will of course be making a video about how we've put this all together, so subscribe to me here on YouTube if you want to see that when it comes out and follow me at home cafe charlie on instagram to see stories of painting decorating picking out gear sorting out the menus and all the other stuff that it takes to make a cafe thank you so much for watching all the way to the end you wonderfully over caffeinated people and if you have any questions about the df83 grinder feel free to put them in the comments and i'll answer any of them that i can thanks again and see you on the next one